Hello everyone and welcome to our Let's Play series of Sorcery. This is Colonel RPG as usual and I'm very happy that it shows to join me today as we cast a spell on these creatures that apparently are very friendly. I haven't I haven't done anything yet. I'm right where we were last episode, um, but uh, we didn't meet them. We didn't find them last uh, last time around. I think we took more time, took longer to get here and there was only a terrible, terrible creature around here. We heard, we smelled the, the smell, but this time around what we're going to do and I hopeful, hopeful, I'm hopeful that it's going to be a good thing. I'm not gonna kill them, uh, but I'm gonna cast a dud, and a dud is the illusion of treasure. I was looking at the spells, but I didn't actually didn't cast it. So let's see what happens. You cast the spell, raising treasure out of the ground itself. The poacher's eye, uh, the poacher's eyes grow wide in amazement, and they begin to stu stuff their pockets with the illusor illusory gold. Some are faster than others, but then the losers turn on their friends, pulling knives, robbing them for their takings. Within minutes, an almighty fight is waging. You take the opportunity to pull off a nice leg of pork, which you eat as you walk away. No, the illusion fades as you leave the field, but the fight, it seems, continues. No, don't eat the thing! Why? Well, it's better than fighting the other thing, but I... What did I get from the other... Oh, I got something... Yeah, I got something from... from I didn't actually take whatever was in there, remember? We got something when we uh, went there. Uh, so I don't want to go to the fair right now, I want to go around. Uh, so if you missed last episode, well... Yeah, well, last episode we couldn't find food over there. I am hopeful that we're gonna be able to find rations so we can get that. Otherwise, we're gonna need to do all this again. I'm gonna need to do all this again. Uh, and I'm gonna show you all the things. Hey, don't worry, it's all good. Uh, I'm... I, I really I really mean it, though. I really mean it. Because I'm kind of afraid of uh, of what is to come. Because I'm gonna have to play this game twice. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with that. But on camera, ah, it's gonna be a little bit... Yeah, a little bit special. Let's go through the fields, follow a narrow path, we know where this is going, and actually it leads to a place where we have been before. You leave the road and follow the path as it winds through the fields along the lower edge of a high fault in the rock. Let's look across the fields. As you pass, you see few creatures working the lands, pulling up the voluminous weeds uh, that grow around their tiny fruit and vegetable plants. In some patches, tethered goats graze and have eaten everything green in sight. The whole place seems barren and poor, like it has not rained for a year or more. Uh, let's talk to the farmer and see if he has food for me. Please have food for me, because I know we can go back to that place. Anyway, you stride into the fields, approaching one of the farming figures. Its face is obscured by a wide, flat hat, but you can tell it is not human. It is strangely gangly, with long, insect-like arms. Holy crap. That's... okay. Um, let's greet the creature. Greetings, farmer, you declare. The creature looks up, but doesn't smile. What are you? He demands. I'm busy, I'm busy. Uh, I, um... I'm looking for work. Can you cut high? The farmer asks, carefully wiping the sweat from his brow with one strange razor-edged arm. Uh, I'm sure I can learn. The farmer waves to a corner of the field, which it still... Uh, which is still to be done. Six gold pieces if you can clear that lot. He bends down and resumes his own harvesting. Uh, well, let's start work, I guess. You draw your sword and set to work, gathering handfuls of the long grass with one hand, and then slashing its, root, uh, its roots with your blade. The work is back-breaking, and after a few hours, you have built up quite a sweat. Once the field is finally cleared, the farmer comes over to you. Not as easy as it looks, says it, he asks. Well, it's hard work, yeah, you admit. It is that. Here. He pulls out a water bottle and some bread. You ha and ha don't eat it, don't eat it, and hand them to you. You're starving after your work. Don't eat it. You accept it. Gratefully, you accept the water. A drink has never tasted so good. Damn it! Why? Why do we save the damn rations? <sighs> anyway, we'll, we'll try, we'll try. A drink has never tasted so good and you feel very much refreshed. Water does wonders, the farmer says vaguely as though citing a well-known proverb. And here's your gold. He adds, putting six gold pieces into your palm. Enjoy the rest of the city, he says. You thank him and resume your path. That was nice. That was really nice. I like that a lot. A nice insect-like farmer that was friendly and, and okay, gave me water and bread. My favorite things. Not really. I mean, I like water and bread, but, well, it's not my favorite things. If you gave me chocolate and cheese, that would be amazing. You stay on the path until it climbs gently, approaching a low ruined wall at the back of a grand building. Yeah, we're gonna go there. Uh, you stop to look over the building. It is a tall, three-story mansion crumbling around the edges now, but it must have once been home to a powerful and important family. It is surrounded by what? 
by white grounds, an ornamental garden now overgrown and tangled. The house is bordered by a tall stone wall broken at the path. One, uh, one on the far side, you see an iron work gate hanging off its hinges. Okay, well, let's go there. Cause can I go up? Can I go that way? I mean, it's kind of a dead end, isn't it? Hmm. I mean, how how would I go on? Cause I could choose not to look at the house, right? Or maybe that's exactly what I'm doing right now. Is going on. Okay, so we're gonna fight a bat. Let's see. You clamber over the wall into the wide grounds of the Grand Hold House. You're surrounded by a thicket of gores and thorny gripweed. And uh, and through branches, you can see a lower the lower floors of the building. Let's search the bushes. Did we search the bushes, bushes before? Uh, find at its heart a small statue of a fat, cheerfully-looking god with a third eye in the middle of his forehead. Oh. Let's examine the statue. Looking more closely, you see there are small depressions on the surface of the stone, on the idol's two eyes, at his forehead, and on his nose. I know what to do here. We didn't get this one before. Man, we're getting so many different things! Touch the left eye first. You gently touch the left eye. A gentle light begins to glow behind the statue's eyes. The right eye. You press the right eye. We had no way of knowing this if we didn't have... Basically, we're repeating, except we're cheating a little bit, but it's it's so unfair that I couldn't just... I could eat the blimberry juice? Come on! Anyway, apparently I can't. Uh, now we go for the forehead, of course. You carefully put one finger on the statue's forehead. With a gentle click, the statue's mouth drops open. And I need to kiss the statue? Okay, so I have left, right, ahead, forehead. Touch the nose or kiss the statue. I'm gonna kiss it. You lean in and kiss the statue on its open mouth. Some kind of liquid spits between your lips and you leap back, clutching at your throat. But it does not seem to be poison. In fact, a moment later, you are feeling much stronger. Thank the god for its kindness. You thank the god for its kindness and make your way carefully out of the thorn bush. Okay. Well, that was uh, some healing stuff, but sure. Sure enough. I mean, and here we are. Oh. You stride up to the middle of the yard when suddenly something knocks into you from behind, sending you sprawling across the dirt. You spin round to see a giant rat towering over you, its clawed wings spread wide with bloodied talons. Oh yeah, you're going down, little guy. It's not that strong. You draw your sword quickly and engage the creature. Well, I'm gonna engage it with this seven stamina that it has. That was a bad move, little guy. That was a bad move. The bat's great wings buffet at, your, well, buffet at your face, making it hard to see you slash out to the creature, hoping to cut off its wings. Okay, so yeah, we know this battle. Let's get inside the the house. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, I could actually do this. Uh, let's get inside the house because that's where we need to go. We need to go up there. I think this might be. Wasn't this the place where we have something over there? We know where to go. Uh, isn't this a place where we? Damn, we never could get up there, could we? Isn't this the house of one of the first lords or one of the lords of this place or something? I don't know. Let's fight this bat. I'll fight this bat and I'll be right back. So here we are at the top of the stairs. I I went over there and then I rewinded uh, because I can't. I I don't want to cast the um, the uh, find safe passage spell down there or down here. I don't know where I need because there's a. If you guys remember, there's a wall with a, like a, a keyhole, but the keyhole is a circle and I can't get anything in there. I do have a key uh, that I got from uh, from the chain ma chain maker place. Um, but, uh, yeah, last time we went over there to the library. Let's go to the bedroom, because we didn't see this before, so this is gonna be new content. And then I'll go to the library and try to figure that out. You step through a doorway into a simple bedroom. The bed is unmade and looks as though its owner left in a hurry. Personal effects are scattered all over the floor, as if the place has been ransacked, which it probably was. A cane lean leans by the bedside. You see nothing else of interest. Let's look at the cane. Did I lose health right there? The cane is a simple straight stick with a leather loop at the top to sleep around the wearer's wrist. It uh, does not look like any other s any sort of weapon, and it does not appear to be magic. I think I know I know what it is for, though. You take it, although you cannot think what it might be for. A second door leads further into the house, or you could return to the stairway uh, stairwell. Or actually, we're going in there. Uh, because I'm feeling totally fearless now that I basically getting through the game without without just it's a totally different experience really. The further door leads to a bathroom. There is nothing in it, not even a mirror, only a gap where one used to hang. The only fixture in it is an empty iron bathtub in the middle of the tiled floor. Let's look under the bathtub. You crouch down and peer under the bath. Something darts at your face and you leap back. What is it? Let's look again. You crouch down again and peer under the bath a second time, just in time to see a rat disappearing through a crack in the floorboards. You head out of the small room. No! I wanna... How does that... Okay, let's find out. Let's see what that does. Let's look under. 
and run the sword under, under the bath. You draw your sword and swipe it an arc underneath the bath. It comes away clean. No blood and no hidden treasure. You head out of the small room. Okay, well, that was an interesting turn of events. You return to the bedroom. Yeah, we do. Let's go back to the top of the stairs. You return to the top of the stairs. Yes, we do. Let's go back over there. And now we have the guys, the eyes at the air. So, let's look at the eyes. And they are not eyes. Uh, stared it out. And they are not eyes. Keep staring. <laughs> it's weird, because we, that's the only way to be in this place, is to keep staring at the eyes. Or, I mean, you could make a fool of yourself. Let's look at the painting and see what we can do here. Uh, sorry, I was, I was covering my mouth as I scratch my nose. Uh, the painting is of a proud and stern looking man dressed in loose leather armor with a serpent emblem stitched along the length of one arm. And this is the ser I suppose this is a serpent that we found downstairs. I think I might have I might have said that um, when we were playing before. Uh, look at the man. I can look at the man. It's fine. Uh, you guys remember that. Look behind the painting. You raise one corner of the frame from the wall and peer up behind it. it but it is too dark to see if there's anything hidden. Let's lift the painting. So, this is the problem. I'm gonna try to balance it, but I'm gonna lose health. But I'm not gonna step backwards, that's the problem. I'm gonna stay still, and I'm gonna keep losing health. You try to stand still to readjust your grip and get your balance, but the weight of the frame is too much. You let go of the painting and it crashes to the floor, landing on your foot. You howl in pain as the painting te teeters, then tilts until it is leaning once more against the wall. I think it's at least, it's good. It's not, it, it, the... Dropping stuff. Anytime you drop something that's valuable on the floor, like your phone or like something, you always kick it. That's the first thing I do all the time. It's like I kick it immediately because it's better to, to hit my foot. I kick it softly, of course. But it's better to hit my foot than it is to fall on the floor. And I'm sure a lot of people do this as well. It's just an instinct by, by now. Uh, let's look at the end wall. You look over the wall where the painting hang, had hang, where it had hung, but there is nothing else of interest. Just its dark outline. Seriously? All that trouble for that? No way. I'm not dead. I'm not dealing with that. Let's yeah. Let's uh. Let's not do anything with that. Uh. Actually, maybe is there anything I can do here? That's different. That's different. Lift the painting, and drop it. I lose health. Crashes to the floor, landing on a foot. Yeah, that's not okay. I don't like that. Uh. Look at the end wall. Yeah, it doesn't change anything. So there's nothing here. I didn't miss anything. Turns out, I really thought I had. Huh. But now we have a cane. So let's leave the room here. There's no no point in being here. Maybe threatening it. Oh, could it be? Could it be? So the painting, no, the library. That's the place where where we are. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So who's there? Let's talk to it. The creature on the other side of the room makes no reply. In fact, it makes no sound at all. Look at the eyes. Let's threaten it. Oh, okay, so they don't do anything. I just made a fool of myself. Okay, that's good. Let's get out of here. Uh, yeah, let's go back downstairs, and let's go to that side, through the fire, and uh, see if I can apply the cane to that wall, or whatever that is, without actually casting a dop. I believe I need to cast the uh, how before I, I cast the dop. Um, let's look into the flames first. Uh, and let's continue in there. Uh, you guys can, if you don't remember how things went, um, yeah, you can feel the grooves over here. Uh, if you don't remember how things went, you can go ahead and pause the video, but we have been here before, so it's not, it's not anything. So let's examine the small hide, uh, the small hole, I mean, and a keyhole. Well, right there, you look through your pack to use the key, and so insert the walking cane. You raise the walking cane and slip the tip into the ho small hole in the back of the fireplace. It fits perfectly, there is a click. For a moment, nothing happens, and then very slowly, the stone begins to move. A passageway is open to your left. Okay. And that's exactly where we were last time. And there's there was a guy that was apparently blind in here, and we got something from him, didn't we? Uh, look at the sh look at the cloth. Uh, we got a tip anyway. Um, search the bandages. Uh, stomach churning. Yeah, but it's got nothing, so it's fine. There's a badge of take the badge. The badge is solid silver and probably valuable to its owner. Should you encounter it, it's the of a noble of Carre. Huh, I got this before, didn't I? And this is the, uh, this is the god, the Korga god, yeah, that's the one. Read the inscription and I can look at the dots. Give me back my eyes. The dots on the idol seem to be daubed with a fingertip. They are perhaps directions. Yeah, the give me back my eyes is not the god, is the... Oh, he was asking the god. Oh, man, that's actually pretty... Oh, man, it's pretty, pretty sad. I mean, I don't know who the guy is, but... Yeah. <laughs> 
It's the god of, of, of giving and all that, so he was asking him to give him these eyes. Poor guy. Yep. Let's get out of here. Let's drink from the fountain outside. Actually, I'm kind of r reticent to drink from the fountain. Uh, because, uh, there it is. Because I want to have health to need to eat. Or have to lack stamina to need to eat. So I can pray to the gorilla, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm not going to drink from the fountain. We're going to go this way. We're not going to take the horse. And we'll see how things go. Uh, we never went up there, did we? Huh. You return to the front yard of the ruined house and back onto the main street. This street is narrow and runs past the grand building towards a cluster of small houses further ahead. A fine horse is tied up uh, at the... Yeah, I can't cast. I don't think I have any creature controlling things. So I could go back there, I suppose. The house. What is that, the house? You approach the... Oh, the horse. Yeah. So can I talk to the horse? I can cast a spell. Do I have anything to cast on this horse? I would try it, but I don't think anything is going to happen. Uh, I'm kind of more or less resigned to the fact that I'm not going to be able to, uh, to get all the spell lines in a single run. Uh, talk with animals. Yes, that, that was the one. Unfortunately, I can't really cast anything over here. Uh, on the Y, I got the H for the fireball. Don't need to cast a fireball. Why? Actually, horse meat would be nice. Sus is for sensing danger. A horse meat would be nice. Maybe I can roast this horse. Huh. Let's do that. Because the horse is mean. So I'm going to kill it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> you cast the spell, building a fireball in your palm. One minute, there is a fine stallion tied to a post. The next moment, there is nothing but ash and a short, charred length of rope. The street is narrow and runs past the grand buildings towards a small cluster of A fine horse... No. No, a fine horse is no longer tied to that mansion. <laughs> I just killed the horse. The poor guy. I can't go in there, can I? No, nope, cannot. Well, I just killed the horse. Do I need to? Let's actually not. Let's not do that. Let's go back here. The horse. The horse. I don't need to use my stamina. So I will talk the horse. Can't do anything with it. So I'm going to leave it right there. And I'll see you later, little guy. I'll see you later. Let's go. This is new as well, isn't it? I don't think we've been here. You follow the road past the grand house. A side road appears on the left. Uh, let's look left. Let's do everything. Looking left, you see an arch, and beyond that, a wide yard. This is the thing, isn't it? Yes. As you watch, a guardsman walks past. Hell yeah, we're going in there. Hell yeah, we're going in there. And of course, this leads back. Let's actually see where it leads back. Hmm. We haven't been here. We have been there, but not here. So how can I loop back if I go over here? I suppose I can, I can loop back through here. It's going to be bad. I'm going to need to... I don't know what, what, how free the game is in that regard. But let's see. Let's see what happens. You slip through the arch in a wide yard. Suddenly you freeze. There is not one guard here, but hundreds. You have walked straight into the training ground of the city guard. A captain is calling out orders at the front. We must be ready, men. The council is nowhere to be seen. The city is leaderless. And all our intelligence says that tonight is the night that Vic and his teeth will try to take the city. It's tomorrow, actually, but we'll see. The guard lets up a rallying cry of disapproval. Or maybe it isn't. Maybe it isn't tonight. I don't think it is tonight. Anyway, the guard lets up a rallying cry of disapproval. You have not yet been spotted. A spell might be helpful here. Um, and also, I would like to say something. I will, I will, uh, I will cast a spell of invisibility, invisibility if I can. I would like to say something. Those things and this choice over here, in a book, it would not be a problem. You would like to say, okay, I have this. It is not considered a, uh, a meal, but I'm going to stay here nonetheless. I'm going to eat it. And... Uh, that would be fixed. That little problem over there in the book, that would be fixed. Unfortunately, it cannot be fixed in this game. So let's see what we can do here. Um, I could ru run or cast a spell. I'm going to cast a spell. If I can cast invisibility, which I think I can. But we'll see. We've got a force field. That would be an interesting one. Uh, Big is becoming a giant. That's definitely going to help me uh, hide for sure. And we got fog. Oh, that's darkness. That's the one. You cast a spell and a thick, confusing fog rises out from underneath your clothes. Or your cloak, but it quickly dissipates in the open air, leaving you no better hidden, and indeed much more conspicuous, conspicuous than you were before. Okay, screw that then. Let's not do that. <laughs> yep, let's do it again. So, let's cast another spell then. Uh, let's see what we are gonna do. Yeah, I should have figured. Some some of these spells are... They can't... They don't work because of... Some, like, explosions won't work because, like, giants, they don't feel it too much. Uh, that's fog. I don't need that. Why did I press the wrong keys again? What about Foth? That's a force field. I don't need that one for right now. Let's see what else we have. 
We have big, okay, and we have uh, a wall, an invisible wall. That's three stamina. I'm gonna hide, and I'm gonna have to fight it out or something. I'm gonna hide. Let's go for it. You look about for somewhere to hide, but you are in the open yard. The only place is uh, by the arch, but by the time you have spun around, someone has spotted you. Here, cries the guard, cap uh, guard captain, trespasser! Let's fight him off. Uh, you go for your sword, but the guards quickly catch your arm. They begin to rifle through your pack. Oh, no, they don't. Sir, one declares, look at this. He pulls out your spell book. So, declares the triumphant captain as you are clapped in irons. We have caught ourselves a sorcerer. A sorcerer. Yeah, what do you want? You ask, willing to make a bargain if they will release you. He leans forward earnestly. Tell me then, sorcerer. What do you know of Vic? Well, uh, I've heard of him, of course. Uh, listen to me, the, guy, the captain growls. I can lock you up if I want. I can lock you up and throw away the key if I want to. I can lock you up and have the key melted down into a an arrow and then shoot you with that arrow. So, you'd better start telling me everything. Well, I'm gonna tell him who Vic is. Uh, no, tell me who Vic is. Uh, that's that was what I was. I said Vic. Everyone knows Vic. Vic is the head of the slavers. Vic, who used to be the shield man of G G Glandragor, the honorable. He, he sighs. Then Glandragor didn't retire of carry, of course. And Vic was never honorable. He bangs his fist into his palm. Vic, who plans to overthrow the council. Uh, well, he's using werewolves. Not that much I know. You answer. I didn't conjure them, but I've seen them. Werewolves, the captain laughs. So we'll hold the city for two days and then the moon will turn. Actually, these werewolves seem permanently changed. Uh, you say, you tell him, explaining what, about the plate armor of the, on the wolf you saw. I don't know how he's done it, but he has. The captain sighs. The rumor is that he's planning something soon. Maybe as soon as tomorrow night. But we have no idea what. Well. He'll need spies. The captain muses. We will. We had some, but we lost them. Everyone who gets into Vic's organization doesn't come out. I suppose he pays a lot better. He drifts off into into thought. He gestures to his men uh, to undo the irons on your wrists. But don't go wandering to city guard barracks again. Uh, it's a sure way to get yourself thrown in the stocks. With that, you are escorted back out of the yard onto the main road. Oh, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Oh, there's the dog. Let's get out of here. That guy seemed to be a little bit upset. So this is all new content. Let's Let's see. Let's see what it is. Um, you are, as you press up on, uh, as you press on up the road, you notice the huts either side are getting smaller. The roadway is now bustling with wharves and, uh, other small fellows. It seems from the contemptuous looks you are receiving that the inhabitants of this sub-hamlet are not kindly disposed towards human-sized outsiders. I am gonna walk on my knees? I'm gonna be laughed at, but I'm gonna do that. You drop down onto your knees in order to appear less threatening, but from the looks you're getting now, this is considered even more rude. You get back on your feet red-faced. You reach the middle of the dwarf ghetto, a small square with a uh, general store off to one side. Further up the street, street, you see a small crowd gathered around two scuffling creatures. Okay, so I'm gonna go over to the crowd because the store can wait, I think, maybe it can't, because, you know, different things and all that. Uh, you push your way through the small crowd in the center, two tiny creatures are grappling fiercely with each other. One is a pixie and the other is a sprite. What's the difference? I mean, we found a sprite before, but... Oh, a pixie has wings. Okay, I did No, we found a sprite before and it had wings, so it means the pixie is not does not have wings. The onlooker are quite fascinated with some cheering on the pixie and others rooting for the sprite. You appear to have caught just uh, the end of the fight. The sprite looks almost exhausted. I am gonna help the sprite. You push your way to the front of the crowd, ready to use magic or other means to turn the tables, but you are too late. The sprite goes for the pixie with the time. I'm, I was gonna bet on the losing guy over there, um, so I don't I didn't even see. So the sprite is exhausted, right? I was gonna help it. Yeah. So the sprite goes for the pixie with a tiny arm lock. The pixie ducks, spins around with a flying high kick, and knocks the sprite reeling backwards across the dirt with a hop, skin, uh, skip, and a jump. The pixie is sitting on a fallen sprite's chest with two fingers up its nostrils. Do you yield? It speaks. The other creature makes a yelping noise, probably a yes. The crowd cheers and he and the depths are settled up. Eventually, the crowd disperses. Okay, let's see if I can uh, earn some money from here because I'm being a scumbag like that. Let's place a bet. Uh, okay, I couldn't. You look around to find someone to place wager, but that isn't time. Okay, well... Thank you for telling me. So that was an interesting thing. I can't. I couldn't really. I, could I do anything differently? Let's find out. Let's. No, don't want to do that. I want to reload. Yes. Let's find out if I can do anything differently. Probably not. 
Uh, let's watch the fight. It's the same thing. It doesn't matter. Okay, let's go to the store and see what happens. You duck your head to squeeze through the doorway of the dwarf store. The proprietor is a stocky type of advanced years who peers at you through a pair of bottle glass spectacles uh, balanced on a long and gnarly nose. Oh, there, there it's the Niller, he remarks as you enter. I was watching you clowning around outside. I suppose you think that's funny. Uh, no, actually, I didn't mean to cause offense, he replied politely. The dwarf shakes his head. If I could mind being oversized like you, I would. Uh, okay, uh, I want to look around. The dwarf shrugs, then look away. I've got enough room to turn that big empty head of yours. You browse the shelves of the shop. Does he like me or does he not? Hmm, I don't know. Maybe. Let's see. Sec selection of gauntlets. You notice two kinds of gauntlets on sale in the shop. Chainmail ones and leather ones. Five gold pieces for either, the dwarf, uh, the dwarf remarks helpfully. Chainmail is hard to make, but leather is harder to come by. There seems to be nothing else to distinguish between them. And he, since you only have one pair of hands, there seems to uh, little use to buying more than one. Yes. Um, so which one should I buy? Yeah, let's go with that one. The dwarf looks at you and thinks for a moment, as though considering your character. Leather, he says eventually. Of course, whether you can trust him or not is another question entirely. I think so. I think so. Let's buy the leather. You hand over five gold pieces and place the leather gauntlets on uh, your wrists. You suddenly feel more skill skillful and proficient, proficient in your sword arm. But is that sensation an illusion? You cannot be sure. The dwarf points at uh, the uh, vi vial of dust. You should consider buying that, he remarks. No one else has. A potion of mystery. You pick a bottle of, uh, of potion carefully from the shelf. It is a thick... Oh, wait a minute. Did I... Uh... It was it? I didn't look at the other choices. It is a thick... The word basically... Chopping for stuff. That's amazing. I love that. I love that. It is a thick colored fluid, clear colored look liquid, and the labor says potion of mystery. Nothing more. Two gold pieces, uh, says the dwarf. Uh, what does he do? The dwarf looks at you with a scathing expression. It's a mystery, obviously, he remarks. What do you expect it to do? Should I smell it? You unstop the bottle and smell it. The smell is sweet and a little bitter. I'm gonna buy it. Went over two gold pieces and the dwarf nods in thanks. Uh, I'm gonna drink it and see what it is for. You gulp down the potion while the dwarf watches. I've always wanted to know what that does, he remarks. A moment later, you are suddenly feeling much more skillful. Your muscles are bulging. A moment after that, you notice something fall onto your shoulder. It seems that your hair is coming out in clumps. The dwarf behind the counter nods. Oh, one of those. I sold one of the chef thing, one of that chef thing last month. The dwarf harumps and leans back. And waits to serve you. Uh, I think I'm gonna need this. Um, I sold one to that chef thing last month. I'm gonna die from this, ain't I? Your muscles are bulging, and the hair is falling. I'm not gonna. I don't need this, do I? I, I don't need this, do I? I. Huh. That's an interesting thing. I, I'm not gonna get it. Let's uh, look at the gauntlets. Uh, and I'm gonna get. Uh, I'm gonna buy this. Ch should I buy the chainmail? Let's go with that one. Uh, and I'll, I'll keep it a mystery, that one. Push on a mystery. I'm just gonna buy it, not open. Yep. Buy it right there. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna save it right there. You put the mysterious potion into your, into your pack. The dwarf rumps, lean, leans back and waits to serve you. Okay, provisions! Yes! Yes! You look over the food on sale and it seems palatable enough. A stack of flat breads and some hard, squeezy cheese. Three gold pieces for, per meals, the dwarf says. It looks like he has four meals worth on his shell. Like, I could buy them all and that would mean uh, 12. Or I could buy two, which is what I'm gonna buy, because I think I'm gonna get another one for almost free. I don't, I'm not gonna need all of them. So just two is gonna be enough. You hand over six gold pieces and place the rations into your bag. You have some money left. Yes. What about the beeswax over here? On the shelf is a honeycomb. Fresh today, the dwarf says, and it costs only two pieces. I'm gonna buy it. It's a good price, and there is enough beeswax here to use in three spells. You, yeah, that's awesome. You pay the dwarf and put the honeycomb back into your pack. What about the small vial of dust? It's also for a spell. You lift a vial of dust from its place on the shelf, and it turns over in your hand. It sparkles a little in the light. Three gold pieces, calls the dwarf, but you cannot tell what it is. I'm not gonna open it. I'm gonna... I, th I think this might be... I'm not gonna shake it. Are you crazy? 
I think this might be a uh, gunpowder. Let's unstop her, unstop her it. I, I said I wasn't gonna open it. You move the open the stopper, but the dwarf reacts with lightning speed. Don't! He exclaims. It will spill everywhere, and then I'll have to clean it up. Oh, this is uh, glitter dust. Then okay, I, I I know what it is. Let's buy it. I went over three gold pieces and take the vial. Then, with exaggerated care, you open the stopper and look inside. It does not contain dust, but sand. Oh, that's awesome! That's awesome! It's not glitter dust, it's uh, it's sand. We need that for, I think, glitter dust, but let's see. That's enough for me, you say. The dwarf nods. A pleasure doing business with you, he replies. You head back out onto the sunlight and stretch to your full height. That was pretty awesome. And now I have two rations. Of course, I didn't have them before, but at least I can have those when I end the game, hopefully. Uh, and uh, can... Go, go back. Let's continue. And actually, we're out of time for the day. So, we're going to have to continue exploring Dwarf Town next episode. For now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Sorcery. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment, like the video. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.